So generally during every fiscal year, there are certain numbers of visas that are set aside for countries or by regions. A lot of countries from Africa have limited numbers of visas in certain categories, especially when it comes to non-immigrant visas. The non-immigrant visas, and if you don't know the difference between that, you want to check out this video, I'm going to leave the link somewhere up here, or you can check on the channel where I explain in more detail the difference between the kinds of visas. If you are applying for a non-immigrant visa you want to try to do everything to maximize your approval rate and so in this video I'm going to be sharing with you some tips that you can use these are going to be very valuable to you so if you know you have interview coming up or you have a trip coming up you want to watch this video to the end so you can be able to apply some of these things because a lot of them are going to be very helpful to you my name is Jimsella Horace and on my platforms, I bring you immigration education and stories of immigrants living the everyday immigrant life in the United States and other parts of the world. So if you're looking for opportunities to relocate or just maybe visit abroad, you want to consider joining our family and turn on your notification so you get notified every time we share another opportunity. I do not work for the United States Immigration Services or any other country. I am not an immigrant lawyer and I cannot guarantee you a visa, but I can guarantee you that I am here to share every opportunity that I learn of. And in case any of them help you out, just leave a comment down in the comment section. And if you have questions, leave them down there also, because I make sure to respond to all my questions and comments as they come. And let's see if I can be of any help to you your research what you need clarity first we're going to be discussing what you can and cannot do with a b1 b2 visa they, they're kind of related even though the b1 is mostly for business and the b2 is the tourism or pleasure part so let's let's go ahead and see some of the things you can do with a b1 visa and a b2 visa and the things you cannot do so first to say you can consult with business associates on a B1 visa because it's a business related uh, trip it's a business related visa so you can consult with with business associates you can attend scientific educational professional or business conventional conferences take note you can set on an estate you can also negotiate a contract while you're on a B1 visa those are, are actually they're within your terms you can do those things and with a b2 visa and you can be here on tourism vacation like holidays you can visit friends or relatives you can do your medical treatment participate in social events hosted by fraternal social organizations yeah you can participate in in events hosted by organizations you can participate in musicals sports those are amateur musicals now not not where you're going to get paid you can if not being paid for participating you can also enroll in courses just for short term not for credit course just something like maybe you're just trying to pursue a partial maybe you want to learn how to make a new american dish or you want to learn how to because the thing about it is that in america is more like the whole world the people from every country around the world in this one country so when you come it's like just basically you witnessing cultures from many different places so just in case you come and you're interested maybe you want to learn something about somebody's culture or stuff like that it's tolerated on your visa and what you cannot do let's say the visitor visas will not be issued for birth tourism if you're expecting a baby, do not apply for a visiting visa. That's one thing that's going to disqualify you or limit your chances. These are some of the things that you want to put into place before you even go sit for an interview at the U.S. Embassy if you know you are applying for a non-immigrant visa. First, you want to be sure that you have... A consistent income have a valid source of income that's 
like maybe a job like not just a job you got yesterday but a job that maybe you've been working for a couple of years and maybe you can have a little attestation from that job or, or an upcoming promotion from your job and those are things that are actually going to boost your chances and if you can show to them that oh yes i'm going on this trip or <clears throat> excuse me even though even if you're coming and someone is sponsoring your trip which is not another very good idea if you're coming on a tourism visa if you're coming for a visit why should someone be sponsoring your trip because if you're a tourist that means you should be bringing in money into the united states so you're coming to spend money that's what visiting is about you're paying your own money you're buying your tickets you're coming to go to places you have enough money so even if someone is saying they're going to cover your cost be able to prove to the counselor that even though this person is paying for my trip but i have this amount of money or just in case or any eventuality i want to still be able to come back on time i still want to be able to cover my my itinerary i still want to be able to do these things that i have to do there and so even though this person is covering my trip or even though this person is hosting me i still have um some couple of dollars whatever it is so you want to be able to calculate your entire trip this is one thing you should be able to do be able to calculate your stay in the United States. If you're coming for a 10-day conference, if you're coming for a two weeks visit, be able to calculate your entire cost. That includes your, your travel cost, your ticket, round trip ticket. That includes your hosting fee. There are some of these websites now that offer bookings for people where you can go and be able to get an invoice where you can be able to get have an idea of how much you would pay per night for a room and you can actually go i think right now they offer bookings that you can cancel if things don't work out so you can go and try to do some booking and just have an idea of the price and whatever and also the address because that's something you're going to need to fill in your form first thing you have to know where you're going to be staying so you're going to need an address to build to put on your form when you're filling up that form in case you're stopping with a family member well you have the address so you're going to use that but if you're coming for a conference or a business meeting and you have to stop in a hotel you have to have an address so be sure you try to check on one of these websites and book a hotel do a booking that you can be able to cancel if things don't go well make sure of that be sure the booking that you get is one that is cancelable so you can be able to get back your money if things don't work as you expect so those are some things you want to take into consideration have extra money always have enough money to cover your trip in case things go wrong don't just walk up to them and say oh i'm going this person is going to sponsor my trip and uh yeah they said they're going to host me and no then you're you're not a tourist because that means you're not coming in the country to spend money and they're looking for people who are coming to actually spend money people who are bringing money here people who are going to boost tourism those are the people they want to give visas to people who they're sure of that are going to return home so just walking up to them and say oh um i have a job or uh, i have a house i have two houses here what are you doing with those houses what are you doing with the properties okay also i have i have a piece of land here even if you have a blank piece of land that's nothing is on i have a piece of land here and i got this amount of money that i intend to start this project when i get back and i've already you know i've already started putting things in place to be able to build this business on over there or maybe my father have a farmland that we're about to start this ag agriculture business on and this trip is going to help me to you know gain the ideas or do the research and you know get, there, there has to be a way that you can maximize that there has to be a way that you can use that to your benefit instead of using it against you like oh oh yeah i, I got i got my house that's that's not enough because you can have that house there family members can live in there while you stay in the united states and don't return you can have that car and you can just sell that car even when things get tough when you're in the u.s you can sell it and somebody sends you that money that's not enough to convince them that you're going to live up to the terms of your visa 
So you want to be sure that you can make use of that tie that you're going to present to them, whatever that tie you think it is. Like your job. Yeah, I'm getting a promotion on my job in the coming months. Or I just got a promotion on my job. Or I just got a new job that's paying me this and this amount. And I mean, you have a proof of that. That, oh yes, upon return from your trip, you're going to take on this new role in your job. You're going to take on this new position in your job upon return from your trip. So I, or I just invested this amount of money in this company or in this one business and I turn to come back and grow it bigger. I'm just going to, you know, look around and get some experience of what it's like and come and apply it to my business. And these are things that they are looking for. Those are things that they expect you to say, but not to just show them carry a whole bunch of D. Even if you took all the paperwork you have in your home, sometimes they might not even look at it because you have to be able to sell yourself. That's what you have to be able to do. Because believe me, they are doing a business. It's more like you apply for a job. When you apply for a job, what do you go there to do? You go to sell your skills. You go to sell yourself. So this is some, it's just the same. It applies to everything you do because these people, they do this thing all day, every day. And so they can see right through you if you're being sincere or not. It's so easy to do that. And so you have to be able to put yourself forward. You have to be able to sell your case. You have to be able to sell yourself to convince them that you have no mind of staying in the country. You actually want to return. And this is why it's more valuable if you've had travel experience, like maybe you've gone to, to one or two other countries, not just driving across the border, but actually getting a visa, going to a country and returning back to your home country within your stipulated time that also puts you in a very good position and then another thing that you want to be sure you can actually justify is your reason for visit 